Validation is critical to any application so that bad data doesn't enter or get stored throughout your application. So that being said, I'm gonna demonstrate how to implement validation in a GraphQL server with hot chocolate. So starting off, I wanna introduce Fluent Validation and then I'm gonna demonstrate how to integrate Fluent Validation smoothly with hot chocolate. So let's go ahead and add a package to our GraphQL demo API. This is our hot chocolate server. So we're gonna manage NuGet packages on this project and we're gonna search for Fluent Validation and let's install that. So there we go, we got that installed and now we're ready to use it. But what exactly are we validating? So a while back we did implement these GraphQL mutations so one is for creating a course, another is for updating a course, and these each take in this course type input. And the course type input is just the information about the course that we're either creating or updating. So this is from the client, from the user, and obviously I wanna validate this before storing it in my database. So to do that, we are gonna use fluent validation. So I'm gonna create a new folder over here. You can structure this however you want, but I do like to have my validators in their own folder. And that's what I'm gonna call this, validators. So add that, and let's add our validator. This is gonna be for the course type input. So I'm gonna call it the course type input validator. Let's create that. And using fluent validation, this is going to inherit from abstract validator. So let's import that from fluent validation. And this validator is for our course type input so let's import that from our graphql schema and then we just need to configure our validation rules so that all happens in the constructor here and inside here we can configure rules for our properties on the course type input using this rule for method so first off this takes in a callback where we select the property that we want to configure so in this case i think i just want to configure the name and what i want for name is i want the minimum length to be i think at least three and then maximum length i want to be no more than maybe 50 i think that's fair and let's see any other good rules on here fluent validation is pretty powerful it's pretty popular in the dotnet community so there is some good stuff on here so i'm going to wrap this up with a message for our error and all i'm going to say is course name must be between three and 50 characters and looking back i could have split this up in the separate rules with each rule having its own error message but I think this will do for now. So now we're just ready to use this validator. So let's head into our mutation. And what I'm gonna do is get my validator here. And before I do anything related to creating a course, I wanna validate the input. So we are gonna need our course type input validator in here. So let's get that into a field. So import our validator, put it into a field, and we're gonna get our validator injected through the constructor. So let's add a parameter there. And then at the beginning of this create course mutation, let's take our validator and validate our course input. And this gives us back a validation result, which we'll check in a second. So if this validation result is not valid, then we're just gonna throw a new GraphQL exception and for now the message will just be invalid input so that handles the validation for the create course mutation but i also want this for the update course mutation i want to validate this course type input so what i'm going to do is just extract this to a method and i'll just call it validate so we're validating the course input before we do anything and i'm going to do the same thing for the update course mutation so our validation is set up the next thing we have to do is actually register our course type input validator in dependency injection so that we can resolve it here. So let's head to our startup.cs and configure services. We are going to add fluent validation. So let's import that and we don't actually get it. And that's because we need a package for this extension method. So let's head back into our NuGet packages and let's search for fluent validation again. And we're gonna install fluentvalidation.aspnet core. So let's install that and should be good to go now. Let's try and import this. And there we go, using fluentvalidation.aspnet core. So it should be good to test this out. Actually, the last thing I wanna do is comment out these authorized attributes just for testing because I don't feel like setting up a user but let's run this. And here we go, I'm gonna execute this create course mutation. The name of the course is geometry, so that's between three and 50 characters, so this should be valid. Let's try it out. So we hit our breakpoint, let's step into our validate method that we created, and let's try out our validator. Oh, and our course type input validator is null because we forgot to register that. 
So we did add flu and validation, but we did not actually register our validator. So we can add that as just a transient. I guess scoped or singleton would also work here as well. But this is going to be for our course type input validator. And now we should be good to go. So let me make sure I still have that break point, which I do. And let's try this out again. So trying to create a course again. Here we go. We hit our break point. Let's step into that. And let's validate our course. And the result looks like it's good. So it is valid. So we continue and all is good. But if I provide a name that's less than three characters, then we should get a validation error. So let's try this again. Let's step in and we are throwing the GraphQL exception. So that's good. And we get our invalid input error message. So nice, that turned out well. The only downside is that we had to manually call our validator. So what I like to do is use this helper package by the app any team that makes the integration between hot chocolate and fluent validation much smoother. So let's head into our manage NuGet packages and install this helper package. And this is app any dot hot chocolate dot fluent validation right here. Let's install that. And now before we go any further, we can get rid of our manual validation. So delete our validate method and all the calls to it. And then we also didn't need our course type input validator injected in here. That's going to be managed by this helper package. So get rid of that. And now we're pretty much back where we started. All we have to do now is add this use fluent validation attribute on our course type input. So let's import that from app any dot hot chocolate dot fluent validation. And then let's also do that for our update course mutation. So add the attribute there. And last but not least, let's head up into our startup.cs. And for our GraphQL server, let's just add one more extension method. And that is add fluent validation. And let's make sure we import app any dot hot chocolate dot fluent validation. And this should all be good now. Oh, and it looks like we get some errors. And I believe the reason for that is because if we look at this app any dot hot chocolate dot fluent validation package, it depends on hot chocolate dot execution 12.5. And we're still on hot chocolate 11. So I think we should be able to work around this. Let's go to our NuGet packages and let's try installing an older version of hot chocolate fluent validation. And it looks like version 0.3.9 is one that depends on hot chocolate 11.3 or greater. So I'm thinking this one will work for us. Let's try using that. Ideally, we should just upgrade hot chocolate to version 12, which I do still plan to do. But let's see if this solves our issues. Looks like it has. So let's go ahead and try and run this. All right, so startup was successful. Let's go ahead and try creating this course. This is not valid because it's only two characters in the name. Let's do it. And oh, it looks like our validation must not have ran because this was successful. So let's see what we did here. And okay, we've actually specified the validator that we want to use for our course type input. So to do that, we just have to use a validator. So that's another attribute from this helper package and specify the type of the validator. So that's our course type input validator. And let's do that for the update course mutation as well. And try this out again. It should actually work this time. So create a course and there we go. We get the validation error and we were unable to create the course. Now, one thing I don't like about this payload for the error is that the message is actually not the message that we configured. And I'd rather have this error code be something that I specify rather than fluent validation. So let's go ahead and configure that. So the first thing I want to do is head back to our validator and let's specify an error code. So with error code and we'll just call this course name length. Now we just need to configure our GraphQL server to actually use this message and error code. So to do that, let's head into our startup.cs and in this add fluid validation extension method for our GraphQL server, we can configure this with some options. So we can just pass in a callback here and open this up. And in this case, all we want to do is use the default error mapper and that should give us back our error code and error message. So let's try this again. And oh, it looks like it doesn't. And I believe, I guess the reason for that is because we're using an older version of this package and maybe that wasn't implemented yet. So ideally we should upgrade to hot chocolate 12 and then this should work. So we'll keep that in mind when we come around to that upgrade. But aside from that, just to summarize, we created this validator using fluent validation for our course type input on our GraphQL schema. And then I demoed how to use the fluent validator, but ultimately 
we installed this app entity to the hot chocolate dot fluent validation helper package to make the integration between hot chocolate and fluent validation a little bit smoother. So all we have to do is specify these attributes for using fluent validation and also specifying the validator that we want to use. So hopefully you can apply this to your own application to satisfy your validation needs. But aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.